Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode we're going to start off with the asteroid capture that we had planned and we've got a little correction burn of 2.6 meters per second in 43 minutes and that will get us from an original approach of 300 kilometers to 81 kilometers here. I don't remember, there seemed to have been a maneuver node in this location, but it only had 0.1 meters per second on it, and it didn't seem to be doing anything, so I don't know what I had planned initially before. It's been a while since I've done the colonization series, sorry about that, but uh, that was because of the start of my new Realism Overhaul series in KSP 1.0.4, and so that sort of occupied me for a little bit, but uh, we are continuing on with our very long list of things to do and I intend to get these things done so anyway uh, I don't think I need to add this this maneuver here let's just get on with it and we will aim to capture that asteroid now it's possible that I am drastically underestimating how much we will need to capture such a heavy asteroid I haven't done a class D asteroid capture uh, in a long time at least uh, possibly since point two three point five so yeah don't really know about these asteroids much haven't had that much experience so most of the stuff we have listed uh, here are mid-course mid -course adjustments so that is what we're going to be doing a lot of in this episode I think and that might get a little bit tedious so I'll try and put that in the middle of doing asteroid stuff Have to get this one accurate because we've got powerful engines. I know I could throttle the engines down, but that should be good enough. All right, let's see how it looks now. Still indicates our approach out here, even though this is actually in the intersect point, and that's because both our vessel and the asteroid are on hyperbolic trajectories. But uh, yep, one day that's before any of the other missions need any attention so let us continue on and see how close we get okay looks like about 900 meters per second difference here and unfortunately our closest approach distance it says here is 222 kilometers even though it says 81 kilometers here quite a big difference so I plan to use all of this stage I think I don't plan to return it we've got too much to do and uh, I think I've uh, already unlocked the reserve tank in preparation for that and we've been using that fuel. And so we'll just use the reserve tank, f uh, not the reserve tank, the, the second stage's fuel in order to do this correction and match speeds with the target. We actually appear to be a little bit past it. really fighting to turn this around towards this way. This is sort of a larger scale view of what's going on here. We're quite a ways out from Kerbin. You can see the vectors closing on each other. Let's see about getting a little bit closer to it. We've got uh, exactly 10,000 delta V left in both stages, looks like. So it's right there. But uh, that's without an asteroid. Okay, two kilometers is fine. And uh, it so happens that our relative velocity is now matching about the delta V we have left in the stage, which suits me. Okay, so one more hour. Well, with the closest approach distance at 3 kilometers, I think I'm going to ditch this stage. I don't want it uh, like crashing into anything, uh, into the asteroid or this in particular. So let's separate and then ignite the next engine. Which is, of course, a nuke. Here we go. Okay, about 30 meters. That's a lot better. Let's get the claw ready. Let's see if I can slow down using RCS. Yeah, that might be the best idea, considering we're carrying so much more propellant. Okay, well, we're approaching quite closely now. 
but let's target the center of mass and that kills all of this detail hmm looking at it we seem aim for just above this protrusion here not really a flat surface okay within 100 meters now seems to occasionally show the the target marker off a bit that doesn't instill me with much confidence yep definitely says it's starting to center mass well it's smoother than I thought it would be this portion okay much less than the 30 meters distance to target indicated there I think that's more to like the center of this thing or something okay we've got it 418 tons 262 meters per second we've got right now that's not enough to send it all the way out to Joule uh, it's already on escape though and it's actually got a little bit of juice to it let's see exactly how much Delta V it would require to hit Joule with this so let's set Joule as a target but I think we're going to try and wrangle it and get it into orbit Well, there's not a particularly good angle to uh, escape. You can see it's taking much more than normal. That's because we're uh, angled uh, this way. Really, we want to be angled differently. So that's why we want to get into orbit first. So let's do that. Let's see how much it'll take to get into orbit if that's possible. Wow. Well, it's going to take more than this tug has on it. We're going to have to send some more tugs. I wonder if we could hit Duna at all. Oh, that's going to... Just that much is going to take a heck of a lot of Delta V. And again, it's because we're askew like this. We're not getting much help from Kerbin itself. We'd want to go in this direction. What if we plot at a different uh, location, not here, but actually uh, out there? Still takes 460, uh, 486 there. But uh, the actual timing would be somewhere around here ish, maybe? Looks like we might have been able to do with uh, about double what we've got right now. It's a bit of an inclination issue right there. Well, there, uh, about 500 meters per second, let's say, would have done the trick for uh, encounter with Duna. And then maybe, maybe Duna could fling us out further. Really tough to say whether that would work out right. But we clearly need something much more than this. So, um, well, let me see what we've got in orbit and then if we don't have anything we'll just uh, keep this attached to this and we'll wait till it comes around I suppose or maybe we'll go chasing it I'll have to think about it okay I jumped from the tracking station to this space tug which brought in this class A asteroid into orbit around Kerbin it's currently in orbit like uh, this really weird orbit but uh, I just uh, tried out uh, plotting a burn in about an hour and uh, it can intercept the the asteroid with the other space tug in 20 hours and a separation of 279 kilometers so it could probably make the same sort of rendezvous that we just did uh, unfortunately this would have less I mean of course it doesn't have the second stage anymore and so it's going to have a lot less delta V than we would need. Uh, we need roughly double what the other space tug has. And this has expended some already. And, and it would expend uh, about 1,383 more in order to get to the target. Actually, it'll, it would expend much more than that because it has to also match speeds at the target. So this wouldn't have enough. I guess the best solution is to launch something fresh and much larger obviously to take care of the business so yeah let me look into that in the VAB okay so what we have here is space tug Delta which is a space tug with four 
LVN nuclear engines instead of just one. And of course much heavier. It should be able to push around that asteroid that we're targeting for about 600 meters per second of delta V. Uh, you can see on its own it's got more than 10,000 and that's with four or so. But uh, yeah, it's still a little bit dicey, still a little bit borderline. Certainly not enough to eject that that uh, asteroid out to Jupiter. But it's a start and I want to sort of work my way up. Uh, I've basically kept the same top portion as you can see since it worked out last time I don't want to mess that, that up. Uh, we've also got the same RCS thrusters. Uh, those were powerful enough I think. And uh, here we have a kick stage. The space tug actually ends here. The kick stage starts here and I just wanted to have that uh, clear out the area between the nukes instead of having something in between and so that's what's going to happen there. Uh, yep, and the kick stage has um, seven LV-909s and that's for 1,681 meters per second of delta V. You can see the thrust weight ratio definitely only suited for space. So the launcher has to take care of everything else and so this is the maximum size tug I felt comfortable putting on the Strider. So this is the Strider launcher, two mainsails and then four boosters. And so that's about the size of it. It's uh, costly but not obscene. Uh, we've got uh, the possibility of creating an even larger space tug on the Strider X. So a uh, Strider X has double the capacity of this one. I said 100 tons to LKO for the Strider, but actually I think it can deal with up to 120. Uh, so yes, this is the situation. And you might wonder why I didn't, if you know your colonization parts, uh, why I didn't use the liquid hydrogen and the these engines. So, so we've got these two other nuclear engines. We've got this 2.5 meter one that produces 300 kilonewtons of thrust with a 900 ISP and this one also has a 900 ISP and it has 720 kilonewtons of thrust with a mass of 27 tons. Now obviously even this one is heavier than four of the LVNs but it also produces more thrust than the four LVNs and also has more ISP. So why didn't I use it? Well that's because the liquid hydrogen tank that we saw here and these burn liquid hydrogen, they don't burn uh, LFO so when we take a look at the liquid hydrogen tank we see that for 12 tons of liquid hydrogen the tank has a mass of 18 tons which is much worse uh, ratio between the empty mass and filled mass than what we have on the LFO tanks and that's consistent across the different types of uh, liquid hydrogen tanks and since they're so heavy that actually reduces their efficiency uh, in comparison to these uh, LVNs. These LVNs are more efficient because of the tank size. Now if you happen to have I don't know what situation these will be better. I'll have to do the calculations but I'm pretty sure they're not more efficient in the case of a tug about this size. So that's why I didn't use that possibility. Um, would I use it with the if I wanted a larger space tug with the Strider X that's possible simply because I wouldn't want to put like nine LVNs on something. Now of course I don't want to put uh, too few LVNs or nuclear engines because at that point we're not going to have a very high thrust weight ratio once we grab the asteroid. After all the asteroid's going to have a, let's say 300 ton mass. Uh, that's going to be slow moving even for these four here it's going to be it's going to take a while. Okay, so yes, I think that's about all I have to say. We know the launcher pretty well by now. Oh, I've adjusted the fairing so that instead of having two, there'll be four. And maybe I'll test that out mid-flight. Maybe I won't, I'll, depending on how risky I want to be. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad. And of course, since we're trying to catch up to that asteroid, I'm not going to time warp to daylight. We're just going to launch it at nighttime and we'll rely on... Uh, ambient light adjustment in order to keep us lit. Now there is the other problem where the target is moving retrograde, right? It's actually uh, going backwards. Now I could launch retrograde, I mean launch against the rotation of the planet and cost uh, a little bit more delta V. Or I can just launch normally, take advantage of the rotational delta V 
and then and uh, that's about 174 meters per second and then just adjust once we get out there it didn't work too badly for the space tug gamma so maybe I think that's probably just the way I'm going to go okay so uh, with that note here we go one important point is of course the structure of the space tug delta is a little bit wobbly I mean, it's got points where it's wide on top and then narrower on the bottom. So I put a lot of struts, but there's no guarantee that that's enough struts. We'll have to see. Okay, passing above the clouds now. Okay, we're now past the speed of sound, going well, strider. Doesn't look wobbly at all. The Strider series has, continues to be very, very solid. Okay, booster set. Okay, boosters separate cleanly. We expect those to be recovered. Do I dare try to release the fairings now? There are four of them now, so maybe it'd work out. Maybe it won't. I don't think it's worth it. I'll just carry them up. Okay, that's 100 kilometers. Let's separate the fairings. Uh, about 20 meters per second extra delta V there. And all right, let's proceed to apoapsis. Okay, here we go. No big reaction wheel on the payload, mind you. So we don't have a huge amount of turning ability. On the bright side, we still have the mod propellants and thrusters that we had on the previous iteration of the space tug. So given that, we should be able to use those to turn quickly if we need to. Okay, I'll have this re-enter. Alright, so I'll have the lower stage re-enter. It's only 76 meters per second. Let's ignite the kick stage. Okay, that's good enough. I, I'm by way of being impatient and also needing to see how to make a rendezvous so let's not waste any time the moon is getting in our way in all sorts of funny sort of ways but uh, maybe that's to our benefit looking at this ah. That could work out for us. Okay, let me fine-tune this and uh, show you what I've got at the end of it. Okay, so I have plotted a separation of 287 kilometers, which, judging from our previous approach, should be enough. The issue is, and that's that's in what? Uh, that is in a day and two hours. Uh, so after escape. So, yeah, it'll be in interplanetary space, unfortunately. But it does require a pretty close moon pass, uh, 61 kilometers. So we're getting a boost from the moon on this one. Uh, and actually, that, that's pretty visible. I think uh, with the other probe, we had to go much faster. We had to spend a lot more delta V to get, uh, to get caught up with the asteroid. Now, it is a thing that I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with the asteroid, even once I attach this. Uh, maybe boost it up to Duna. We don't have enough juice to boost it up to Jewel. We'll have to wait for it to get to a... Even if we had a Jewel thing going, it, uh, we won't have enough because we'll need at least a thousand more than we... Uh, more than just escape from Kerbin. It takes two thousand when you're in low Kerbin orbit. So once you are escaped from Kerbin SOI, You'd still need another thousand or so, and we don't have that with this probe, this uh, space tug. So, 
Yeah, that's the situation. If we could get a boost from Duna, maybe we could uh, at least boost out to Jewel Orbit, if not actually get a Jewel Encounter. And then we could work from there. So that's a possibility. But let's just uh, get some extra Delta V attached to the asteroid first. And then we'll, uh, we'll at least have some possibilities to work with. Perhaps bring it into orbit around Kerbin for some better planning. Maybe using a heavier space tug with the Strider X. But uh, we, we first need to get some more Delta V out to it. Okay, so that is the plan. And we have a possible encounter there. We are going to have to do some serious corrections. Well, we, we might not have to do too serious a correction. It's uh, basically, we, we're not going to have to correct inclination at all because we'll be outside of Kerman SOI. It's irrelevant at that point. Uh, we just need to correct the gap between these two orbits, the green line and the dotted red one. And uh, that that's a gap, but it's not uh, it's not undoable, not when you have this much delta V. So all things look good, and so let's get over to that node and start our transfer. We don't have any other activities lined up on, for the next three days, so yep, we can just do this. What's our stage time? I don't want to. Actually, okay, 7 minutes and 12 seconds left in the full stage. Probably we'll need at least 5.5 minutes of that to do this burn. Should be pre pretty evenly distributed be between the two sides of the maneuver node, so probably start out about 2.5, well, 2 minutes and 45 seconds or so. So let's go. It's quite a ways away from the vector, so. We're, we have some waste, but it's better to be accurate because we've got such a touchy encounter with the asteroid. Here we go. Okay, here we go. We are on escape now. And it is critical that we meet up with the moon in the right way, of course. You can see we're going around the wrong way right now and we'll cross over hopefully to the correct direction pretty soon. Okay, currently crashing into the moon. No guarantee that getting this part right will actually get us the encounter that we want with the asteroid, but hey, couldn't hurt. It's a start. Doesn't look like this is quite right. Well, let's uh, start off by finishing this off. And let us see what it's doing to our encounter here. Well, we're still 3,000 kilometers rather than 300. So let me make a further adjustment out here. Uh, further out, maybe. And see how much closer we can get. At least we're not crashing into the moon or doing something weird with the moon. We're sort of on the right side, right? Right. A little bit of an inclination going here getting a boost. The inclination is helping out I think. Okay well I've got a 12.8 meter per second adjustment to get it back to 341 kilometers not as good as I originally had it but hey uh, under, the consider uh, under the circumstances I mean uh, it's not bad and so we're actually going to 86 kilometers away from the moon so that will be okay too. Obviously, it would not be okay if we were crashing into the moon to get to the asteroid. That is not okay. Okie dokie, let's finish this off. That 0.1 meter per second, we'll get that too. Or not. Or... Okay, well, sort of. Okay, let's see where we're at now. 87 there, as planned and 360 kilometers let's call it well let's let's just go for escape now I suppose on uh, well we're actually gonna be passing by the moon and then going for escape okay uh, we've adjusted our periapsis a little bit we're passing by the moon safe distance away we are still a 84 ton vehicle here well, now we've exited Moon SOI. Time warping a little bit faster than I wanted, but it helped us instead of hurt us. We're at 290 kilometers now. 
the asteroids hit escape. Now it's 1,561. Uh, I shouldn't have time warped through the asteroids escape. Uh, let's see if we can fix this now. Probably better now than later. Okay, 23 meters per second in order to get it to 85.5 kilometers, so better than before. But then again, that might all go away once we escape from Kerbin SOI. Let's see what that did. Okay, 82 kilometers. Perfect. Well, excellent anyway. Okay, continuing on. Okay, we have escaped and we still got 84.6 reading here. So that's pretty good. Let's see difference to target. It's about 763 right now. Probably about that once we get there too. That's in almost eight hours and we still got time before everything else has to happen. Okay. Okay. We are about one minute away from the target. It's right there. 90 kilometers away. And we are going to kill our velocity. Okay, here we go. Almost done with this stage. And that's the end of that stage. And now the nukes. Okay. And now we'll head in on approach. So the way I figure it, I should probably try and bring this on the opposite side from the existing space tug just to keep everything in line with the center of mass. If I try and put this off to the side, it would uh, cause problems, I think. Okay, so we're definitely within range now. It looks like the space tug is on that side. Tough to see right here. We just, uh, well, let's get ourselves back in line with it, and we'll see once we get closer. Ah, the RCS ports don't really help us to slow down very quickly. You can see our ability to slow down is very muted. It takes a couple of seconds just for 0.1 meter per second, so gotta watch out for that. Wonder if I could have the other space tug sort of turn the asteroid around to so that the uh, opposite side is facing us. Don't know if that's a good idea or not. I mean, it's bound to be pretty darn heavy for this thing. Let's see, where are we? Okay. We can target it, and we could have this face the target, I think. Let me use some of its mob propellant to do that. Oh, it's turning. I'm gonna shut off this LVN here. So after that one does its job and leaves, this one will still have 262 meters per second to use for stuff. We'll obviously control from that one first when we begin the burn. So, so uh, we can uh, sort of attach in this depression here, I think. Sort of a natural grabbing point. Okay. Alright, so that is the plan. It is now time to arm the claw. Control from here. Second claw arming of the episode. That's its first, I guess, maybe. Okay, getting a bit closer here. Things are wobbling a bit. And what I mean is, closest approach distance seems to vary. Sorry this episode has just been a bunch of asteroid chasing, but that is a very lucrative contract for us. In fact, the most lucrative contract we've picked up. So the, the eject a class D asteroid out of the solar system, I think it's like 2 million funds if we make it. Then we got like a million in advance. So, yep, definitely worthwhile to 
send as much to this asteroid as possible to make sure it can work out. Hope it is, uh... I mean, it didn't give me... I, I don't remember seeing the message, this asteroid is okay for this contract. Hmm. Maybe I just missed that. Well, or maybe that... Is that in point nine zero or 1.0? I don't even remember which... Whether that uh, feature is in this version of KSP. Possibly. You know, where it pops up with whether you've got an asteroid that will fulfill the contract or not. But anyway. Well, I've been taking it nice and slow. Unfortunately, that hasn't left me much time to do anything else, but uh, at least it should be safer. And this did cost a lot to send up. Speaking of which, we should check... Uh, Obviously the core stage, which is what this is, was destroyed, but we did get back our boosters at about 14,000 apiece. But still, the mission itself with all these nuclear engines, this costs quite a lot. So yeah, definitely don't want to have to redo this part. Yep, seems to be right in the center of this cavity. Pretty close to the center of this cavity that we're aiming for here. Okay, it is clawed. And we will control from this claw. And... Okay, there we go. I was waiting for the Delta V to be positive. Alright, so we've got uh, 792 in this direction, and then it's actually 252 in that direction, which actually more than 252 once we release this and dump this portion. So uh, probably more than 1,000 meters per second we have available to us. So that's good. But I'll have to wait until the next episode before I can figure out what I want to do with it and when. Uh, probably any plot that we want to make for Jewel or Duna or wherever is going to have to wait until these guys happen. So, at, at the very least. So yeah, events are continuing. We have, we have some Delta V attached to an asteroid. I can't say we've actually wrangled the asteroid or, or uh, done anything in particular with it except for attach these two guys to it. But uh, we'll see what we can do with this later on, and we'll use that as a way of dividing up the activities so that we don't have just a bunch of mid-course corrections in the middle of a video. Okay, so uh, with that done, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.